Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, I have come today to talk about uh, some new initiatives that will be undertaken uh, by the Toronto Police Service in response to community concerns about violence that has taken place most recently in our city. Um, I will speak very briefly uh, about our preparations for ca the Caribbean, excuse me, the Caribbean uh, Carnival Festival that's, that's upcoming uh, next week. In, in preparation for that, we have always worked very, very closely uh, in consultation and in partnership with the event organizers. Uh, once again this year, we have made preparations and plans to ensure that there is an adequate number of police personnel available to assist with that event and to ensure the safety of all who would participate. Uh, in preparation for this event, we impose upon our officers a mandatory shift schedule which requires them to work additional hours. And for example, our day shift, uh, we ask to work 12 hours instead of 10, and the midnight shift works 12 hours instead of, of 8. That enables us to redeploy our afternoon shift. And in redeploying our afternoon shift, we are able to, to create additional policing resources to police this very, very significant and important event for the City of Toronto. We have done this over several years. This year, we will have, as a result of our, our imposed uh, compulsory overtime regime for our officers, asking them to work more hours, we will have approximately 400, up to 456 officers available, uh, additional officers available to work in the downtown core throughout the weekend of the festival. In addition, we will be deploying 350 uniform officers to work on the parade. In addition to those uniform officers, of course, we will have officers from our intelligence unit, from our, our various enforcement units also present. Our intent is to assist the, the event and its organizers in holding a safe event. We work very closely together. They will also have parade marshals and their own security personnel in place. And I believe that the preparations that we have made together can give great assurance to all who might attend this wonderful event that it will be safe and that the police will be significantly present working with the event organizers. We are also aware that there has been a great deal of concern throughout the City of Toronto with respect to a recent increase in violent activity involving guns and gangs in our communities. In order to respond to this, we are going to be introducing a program which will commence on the Monday following the, Fe the Caribbean Festival. Beginning on, on Monday, August the 6th, and uh, commencing through the period up to and including September the 9th, we will also be asking our officers to work longer hours. We will be asking, uh, again, uh, that they would work compulsory overtime and thereby enable us to redeploy a significant portion of our officers, as many as 329 officers on any given day, to be utilized for patrols in our neighborhoods, to be utilized to help us not only keep our community safe, but to create a sense of safety, to restore a sense of safety in all of our neighborhoods. We will be deploying our officers in various locations, and I'd like at this time to call upon Deputy Chief Peter Slowly. Deputy Slowly is responsible for Divisional Policing Command, and he will now explain what, will, what our officers will be doing in that deployment in the community. Thank you, Chief, and good afternoon, everybody. The Chief has uh, alluded to the new Summer Safety Initiative that will be rolling out. In fact, um, the work has been ongoing for quite a while. The Toronto Police Service has uh, been tackling violence in the city using our Toronto Anti-Violence Intervention Strategy for over a half decade with great results. But with every great strategy, there are new challenges, and so we've enhanced uh, our approach to gang violence and anti-violence. Seventeen police divisions across the city, all using the same principles, intelligence-led, risk-focused enforcement, and community mobilization, which includes strong partnerships some of our partners are here today, and you'll hear from some of them later on. We have over 200 community and youth engagement programs from the start of the year and will continue on through this summer initiative. They include short, medium, and long-term problem-solving and community capacity-building initiatives. In the earlier part of the year, we saw an increase in violence in the northwest corner of the city, 23 division and 31 division. We didn't wait. We took action. We created what's known as a Neighborhood Tavis Initiative in those two divisions and placed over 60 additional officers into those neighborhoods, walking the beat, on bikes, in cars, not just 
locking up the bad guys, but also working with our local community partners. After the violence in the Eaton Center in the downtown core, we did another project, Project Post, which has been ongoing, affecting 14, 51, 52, and 55 divisions. Again, locking up the bad guys and working with our local community to build capacity and look after our high potential youth in at-risk communities. Since July 20th, all 17 police divisions have created and implemented operational plans that deal with gun violence and gang violence, high visibility uniform presence in highly victimized areas, targeting high risk offenders, while also supporting our high potential youth and building local capacity. The chief alluded to the extra staffing and efforts that will be taking place over the long weekend, which include direct supports to the Caribbean Carnival. Across all 17 divisions, over 1,200 police officers will be working their regular shifts. There will be no decline, no change in normal police service delivery. In addition, the downtown area where most of the carnival events will be taking place will have up to 456 officers each day. The parade itself will have 350 dedicated officers in addition to all of the other intelligence and specialized support and city support resources that we've had in our previous year plans. We have great working relationships with the event organizers. They have their own private security and security operations and we are working in conjunction with them. We expect, as always, to have an incredibly successful event where officers and the public and visitors from around the world will have a safe and fun time. We'll do our best to support that. Commencing immediately after the long weekend on August 6th, we will have increased capacity, more police officers, more boots on the ground. These are real officers working in the most victimized areas, as many as up to 320 officers per day during that period, commencing August 6th to September 9th. Again, intelligence-led, risk-focused enforcement, and community mobilization. We'll be working in those communities with our partners, helping those young kids to do their best to be their best. We're also realigning many of our support units, all of our major crime functions, our community response functions, our bail compliance unit functions. will be aligned on the same shift schedule to allow greater coordination and communication an increased number of officers to deal with the most high-risk offenders, the people who commit violent crimes and the places where they, where they commit those violent crimes, our officers will be in greater numbers and greater coordination. Those 200 plus youth and community engagement programs, they will still be all go ongoing. No changes. In fact, there'll be increased supports from our officers to those programs over that period of time. On a daily basis, there will be continuous pursuit of our high-risk offenders and continuous engagement with our young people and our community partners in those neighborhoods in the most respectful and development-focused ways possible. We're using some new innovations. In fact, we're mainstreaming social media into all our operations. We're integrating our divisional and specialized assets together in ways that we haven't done before, and we're approaching this in a borderless way Instead of one division looking after its problem, we've erased the borders. If there's a problem somewhere in the city, we can move resources, these extra resources that we've put in place, up to 329 officers a day, those extra resources can be moved anywhere, anytime in the city that requires it. And not just for major events. For issues like small events that start off relatively innocuous and innocent, but have a sense of problems around them, as, they, as we identify potential threats, we can move those re resources proactively to mitigate against those threats, if not prevent any issues that could come out from it. We're gonna be doing extra work on the transit routes, highways, and subways. Officers will be interdicting along those areas to make sure gangs don't use those routes and criminals don't use those routes to commit those crimes. And some good old tactics. More foot patrol officers, beat patrol officers in neighborhoods, available, approachable, respectful to the local community to help them in all the challenges that they face. This is about public safety, reducing victimization, reducing fear, improving public safety, improving service and trust. It's everyone's responsibility. We're gonna put the right people in the right place, doing the right things with the right partners to produce better results. I'm now gonna turn things over to Acting Deputy Chief Jane Wilcox, 
who will speak about Special Operations Command and their role in the Summer Safety Initiative. Good afternoon. Thank you, Deputy. You've just heard about all the work that Divisional Policing Command and some areas of specialized operations and the kind of activities that they will be engaged in. I'm responsible for the Integrated Guns and Gangs Task Force. This unit was created to ensure that this city has police and legal specialists to focus on all aspects of firearm-related crime and criminal street gang activity. They have had a number of successes in the past in dismantling violent street crime gangs and disrupting gun smuggling rings. To date, this year, they've seized over 250 crime guns. Their job, very simply put, is the relentless pursuit of criminals and their guns. The additional financial support announced earlier this week from the province allows us to add additional investigators to the integrated gun and gang task force. We will also be including, again, the expertise of our police partners, particularly that from the OPP, Peel, Durham, York, and Halton. We've worked with them successfully in the past, and they will be working with us to help us target those individuals and their guns and put them before the courts. The additional investigators that will guarantee that we can put even more pressure on those individuals who have chosen violence and gang activity, especially those who have clearly demonstrated that they don't care whose children or loved ones that they hurt. The gun and gang investigators will be working closely with our bail compliance officers from the divisions to identify the right people and locate their guns. This combined effort, along with the additional resources, gives us a capacity that we haven't had before. And to echo Deputy Slowly's message to the community, it's a shared responsibility, community safety, and we really encourage those folks, if you have knowledge about guns, if you have knowledge about potential conflict, don't hesitate to call the police. We have the resources to be there and provide the safety for our neighborhoods. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, what we've announced today is additional resources, additional police personnel uh, going out into our communities. Our intent is not to over-police our communities. Our intent is to over-protect them. We also want to send a very clear message to any individual who, or group who may choose to engage in violence that puts themselves, others, and their communities at risk that they will be relentlessly pursued. Um, uh, we recognize that our efforts to keep our community safe is always a partnership, and as Jane has indicated, a shared responsibility. And I am very privileged today to be joined by representatives of our community who we have consulted in the preparation of this response and who I'd like to inv invite uh, to speak on it. Uh, first of all, Audrey Campbell of the Jamaican Canadian Association, Sharon Shelton of Tropicana, and Mahad Youssef uh, representing the Somali community. Uh, these are important community partners and quite frankly, their perspective on community safety and the work of the police in their communities is of, of great importance to us. Audrey, please. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Chief Blair. The Jamaican Canadian Association has been at the table in the last couple, in the last few days with not only Chief Blair, but with Premier Dalton McGuinty, as well as Mayor Ford. Our goal in all of this is to ensure the safety of our community. We also want to ensure that the social programs that can prevent this type of violence from happening in our community is also implemented. This is the first phase of one of the discussions that have taken place. We talk about policing. There is a balance that is necessary, as the Premier said, in terms of addressing what is going on in the streets and ensuring that our community is safe. The second part will be evident in the next 30 days when Minister Hoskins comes back with his, his recommendations. But JCA has been located in 31 Division, which is the Jane Finch Corridor for the last 20 years. We've been community service providers for the last 50 years. So we have been at the forefront in terms of the youth outreach, addressing and advocating on behalf of our community. We thank Chief Blair, Deputy Chief Peter Slowly, 
for meeting this head on, for agreeing to sit down and get the input from the folks who are on the front lines that are dealing with this day to day. It's important that people understand the additional policing that you will see in our community is for your safety because good, decent, hardworking citizens are, are caught in the crossfire and they are becoming the victims and the collateral damage of how these young people are resolving their disputes because they don't know any other way to do it. Like I said, policing is one component of it. It is an, it is an important component of it, but the social programs are also very important as well in terms of preventing and, and inter being part of the, the, the intervention process. So in terms of what JCA does, we have youth outreach workers out in the community talking to these, to these young people, trying to make a difference, trying to get our voices heard, and also trying to communicate the reason why some of these things are happening and how we're going to be working with them to ensure their safety going forward. So I want to thank all of you for coming out today, and I want to thank Chief Blair and the Toronto Police Services for what is about to take place. And I also want to encourage, please, this is about all of us. This is about our children. This is about preventing the loss of lives. Even the folks that are, are doing the shooting, they're somebody's children as well. And maybe if some of these programs were in place and they were a part of it, this could have all been prevented. So I thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sharon Shelton from Tropicana Community Services. Uh, we've heard today that the Toronto Police has announced that they will be more visible than ever in the neighborhoods that we've seen escalate in violence. Based on what has taken place, we understand the police response. We all agree that the expectation of every citizen is to live in safety. We must state that there is also an expectation of mutual respect. We ask the police to remember that the majority of the people lived in the focus communities are good, productive citizens of Toronto. Understand that there is a human face to our communities. There are mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, and friends whose circumstances are such that they may be living in poverty. They grieve our, with our society as a whole. We expect that the officers will conduct themselves in a manner that is respectful of the community members. We ask the community to utilize this opportunity to empower yourselves by taking the lead and forming partnerships with the officers that will be visible in the community. Take the lead in beginning the dialogue. Work with them, even if you feel that they have let you down in the past. And we ask all other stakeholders to remember that this cannot be done in isolation. As Premier McGuinty stated last week, we need a balance. We need strong policing as well as strong social support. All parties that are speaking out on the issues affecting our city, as well as research such as the Roots of Violence report, agree that a coordinated, collaborative, sustained approach is necessary. Tropicana Community Services has been active in the community for over 30 years providing services to improve the lives of individuals and families living in communities that are considered to be at risk. Currently, Tropicana has 1,620 young persons in job placements for the summer, providing them with life skills and the tangible benefits of a real wage. With the assistance of volunteers, we tutor students to improve their performance in the school curriculum. We have the capacity to do much more should sustainable funding become available. 1,620 young people are in jobs, but over 4,000 young people applied for those positions. These are challenging times, but Tropicana's motto has always been working together to help each other. With shared responsibility, we can be assured that the outcomes would be positive. Thank you for having me. Thank you much, very much, Sharon and Audrey.
Hood for joining us here today. Uh, we are very grateful for your advice, for your support, and we take your counsel very, very seriously. And thank you, thank you for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I certainly want to assure the people of Toronto that we are investing, we are using the money that they invest in public safety as efficiently and as economically as we can. There is a cost associated to what we have announced today, but we are not asking the City of Toronto for any more money to do it. We will do it within our existing resources. We believe that the community partnership is an important one, and I want to, to thank our community partners, all of the people in all of our Focus neighbourhoods, for their support and their commitment working with us to safer communities. I want to acknowledge my officers. We are asking them to dig deep. We're asking them to do more. We're asking them to work longer hours and to make the effort that is required of them to ensure the safety and a sense of safety in all of our communities. And I want to acknowledge the Toronto Police Association, who we have worked closely with in preparation of, of this announcement. Finally, I have an ask of all of the people of Toronto, because community safety is a shared responsibility. If you know of a young person who has a gun, you have to let us know. We want to get that gun out of the community, and we need information from the public who have that such knowledge to enable us to do that. If you are aware of young people who are involved in some dispute, either individually or collectively as a group, that could lead to violence in any of our communities, you have to let us know, and we will do everything possible to prevent that violence from occurring and to, re to maintain the safety of our communities. If you attend an event, and at that event, you see something that causes you to be fearful, by all means, get yourself to safety, but give us a call. We need you to tell us when such an event, or such risk exists for others, so that we can go there and render that safe. And it is only by trusting each other, it's only by communicating with each other, supporting each other, that we will be able to ensure the safety of all of our communities, all of our neighbourhoods, and all of our young people. The Toronto Police Service works very hard to earn the trust and to maintain the trust of all of the people of this city. I want to assure all of the people of our city, but in particularly those who live in the neighbourhoods where much of this violence is taking place, we are coming in, in larger numbers to help you be safe. We will support you and respect you and we will need your help. Thank you very much, and we will all be available to answer any questions that you may have.